Hi, I'm Xiao Shi, a software engineer in Facebook's Boston office. Today, I'm going to talk about Flight Tracker, how Facebook manages consistency across our read optimized online data stores. I'll start by describing the challenges we faced, providing read your writes consistency for the social graph, give a high level overview of our solution, Flight Tracker, how we use it to provide read your writes by default, and how we follow the same framework for additional write visibility guarantees. And in the end, share some lessons learned and our experiences in production. Please refer to our paper for more details. As described in a paper in Usenix ATC 2013, Tau is Facebook's geo-distributed data store that provides access to the social graph for all of our applications. Tau's data models are designed for graph, nodes, and edges, and its API is very simple, serving mostly point queries and range and counts for edges. To render a Facebook feature on a phone or a browser, a user device may issue many web requests that are handled by stateless web servers. In turn, each of these web requests may issue hundreds to thousands of reads to Tau. Our baseline consistency is eventual, but our developers want at least read your writes to make it easier to build interactive applications on top. Additionally, since applications don't assume exclusive ownership of data, but do expect concurrent modifications, reading fresher data is always OK. That is to say, the consistency guarantee that application developers get is a sort of lower bound semantics, or at or after what the app just wrote on a per item basis. Finally, applications can query the latest data if necessary. This option could come with high latency and low throughput, so should only be used sparingly. Let's start by providing some historical context on Tau. Tau is implemented as two layers of write-through caches in front of an eventually consistent, asynchronously replicated database. Writes go through the two layers of caches to the primary database before getting replicated globally. This diagram shows the path for a single Tau write, but keep in mind that one web request may perform many Tau writes and even more reads. Tau provides low latency, high availability reads since the vast majority of the reads are served in the local region by the L1 caches. Tau used to rely on fixed communication patterns to provide user-centric read your writes. Requests from a user are routed to the same web server cluster and communicate with the same Tau L1 cache cluster. Every layer of cache is write through. We send reads along the same path in which the writes were done to provide read your writes. Both of these communication patterns became a scaling limit as we grew. Since 2013, a lot has changed in our systems. To improve load distribution, we moved from cluster stickiness to routing users to particular regions. As cross-cluster network improved, we no longer needed to couple web server clusters with Tau L1 clusters, which reduced the number of L1 replicas in a region. Failovers and disaster rerouting allowed us to improve availability and resilience of our overall system. In addition, we have many more data centers than before. For all these reasons, our routing must be more dynamic. In this graph, the dotted arrows represent reads that wouldn't observe Bob's writes had we kept relying on write-through caching for read your writes. As Tau grew, we also introduced global secondary indexes for the social graph, as well as other data stores to optimize for particular query workloads. These data stores are also asynchronously updated to cater toward our read-heavy workload. Developers moved from directly calling the Tau API to using a query language from a thick client library that can express more complex predicates over the graph, which provided us with opportunities for transparent query optimization. However, these additional read-write paths introduced similar consistency problems that write-through caching did not cover. These system evolutions led us to rethink social graph consistency. The problem we face is the following. We want to continue to provide read your writes centered around end users, but we don't want to fix communication paths. We want to preserve the high efficiency, high availability, low latency, and hotspot tolerance of our data stores, as it is important for our read heavy workload. We want to extend uniform semantics to global indexes and new data stores without sacrificing the loose coupling of our system that enabled separate development and deployment. This is a familiar algorithmic problem. We face an undesirable trade-off between consistency versus efficiency and availability. 
At the same time, this is a software engineering problem. Any solution we build needs to be duplicated to all of our query serving data stores. Our solution, Flight Tracker, allows us to tackle both by decomposing the consistency problem. Consistency guarantees boil down to what writes are visible to a read. We separate the problem of identifying missing writes from ensuring visibility of those writes on a read. We build a service called Flight Tracker to identify and collect metadata for writes that need to be made visible. We encapsulate these write metadata in a ticket and attach this ticket on each data store read query, which we call ticket inclusive reads. Each data store is then responsible to ensure that the read results reflect the writes in the ticket. By delegating the problem of ensuring visibility to each data store, we allow them to employ different strategies that are suitable for themselves. In the case of read your writes, here's how the decomposition works. Since user writes spend multiple web requests, we need to store per user recent write metadata outside the web servers. We choose to do so in the separate service Flight Tracker. Its API is exactly a distributed hash table that maps user IDs or session IDs to recent write metadata. Assuming async replication finishes everywhere in about 60 seconds, Flight Tracker only needs to store 60 seconds of metadata. Now suppose we have Bob's recent writes in the Flight Tracker service. Whenever Bob sends another web request, it performs an initial fetch from Flight Tracker to retrieve Bob's recent writes in the form of a ticket before doing anything else. Our client library then attaches this ticket on all subsequent data store reads as ticket inclusive reads. Note that the initial ticket fetch from Flight Tracker is amortized over the potentially hundreds of data store reads. While the latency overhead to read from Flight Tracker is pretty small, only about a millisecond, this amortization is the reason that Flight Tracker doesn't have to handle the full read QPS of Tau. On the write path, after a read request performs a write, the data store returns its metadata in a ticket, which our client library then forwards to Flight Tracker before acknowledging the write succeeded to the application. Both the read and write flows are done automatically by the client library hidden from the applications. Now let's talk about tickets. Ticket contains metadata that identifies a set of writes. As write sets, tickets are joinable by way of set union. Tickets are encapsulated. Most code path treat tickets as opaque tokens, and they can be serialized and compressed on the wire. We even encapsulate the name. If we call write metadata a timestamp or transaction ID, we found that when given something like transaction 100, Infrastructure engineers often conflate guarantees about its contiguous prefix, namely transactions 0 through 100, versus guarantees about an individual write, namely the transaction 100. So we gave this write set a new name ticket to reduce potential preconception about its semantics. This is what the schema of tickets looks like. On the right, we have the JSON printout of a ticket. The concrete details here don't really matter, but the important point is that the representation can be database specific. Database A's metadata format does not need to be the same as database B's. It can also be of different granularity from per object to global. When an individual database generates a ticket on a write, it would only contain metadata from that database, but joined tickets can contain multiple writes or writes from multiple databases. As for ticket inclusive reads, Data stores need to ensure that read results reflect the writes in the input ticket. This problem is data store specific. For example, it's more complicated for global indexes than for caches. Generally, our strategies fall into these three categories. We could fix the data store first, ensuring the local data is fresh enough before serving the read. We could fix stale results after we read from a potentially stale replica, for example, one of our commonly used strategies is to do client-side re-repair for indexes. Or as a safe fallback, we could always reevaluate the query on a different replica or at a later time. No matter what strategy we're using, we need to be able to make a local decision about whether to do extra work, such as fetching from database primary or go across regions, and the answer needs to be no most of the time. For the sake of time, I'll only talk about the first strategy here, and introduce the term consistency miss. For the other strategies, please see the Flight Tracker paper. In this diagram, when the L1 cache receives the ticket inclusive read 
and determines that its cache content is not up-to-date, one of its options is to take a miss and fetch the up-to-date data somewhere else. We call this type of cache misses to satisfy write visibility constraints a consistency miss. We found that this vocabulary is helpful for system monitoring and accounting, general communication, and building the mental models of engineers on our team as well as on the data store teams. To process this consistency miss, this L1 cache replica can attach the ticket recursively on its reads to other cache replicas or databases to ensure the freshness of the returned result, allowing flexible communication patterns. There are several other properties of handling consistency misses worth pointing out here. After fetching the fresh items elsewhere, the L1 cache only fix up those stale entries, leaving the remaining cache content untouched. This fine granularity fixing allows us to only do extra work for the stale entries instead of the entire cache. As with other types of cache misses, each cache can take a consistency miss once and benefit all subsequent reads, even ticket-inclusive reads with similar or the same freshness constraints. This technique is applicable to even client-side caches on the web servers, and largely, it is the reason how we preserve the hotspot tolerance for Tau. While caches can easily determine whether their cached items are fresh enough to serve a ticket-inclusive read, it is more challenging for our indexes because they're global but asynchronously updated. The update pipeline for indexes could reshard, transform, or even drop certain writes along the way, as they may not be relevant to certain indexes. But that means that an index read server may not be able to distinguish between a dropped write versus one that's not replicated yet. Please refer to the Flight Tracker paper for our solutions. So far, we have been talking about read your writes, which is a good default and sufficient for the vast majority of our applications. Our default session is an end user, which is sticky to a region. But a handful of applications need write visibility guarantees other than read your writes, specifically when writes are not associated with an end user or when multiple regions are involved. For these applications, we still follow our decomposition framework, but allow them to define their own notion of a session, as long as the write sets don't get too large. For example, an async job or even a particular tau object could be its own session. Reads and writes can even belong to multiple sessions at the same time. To overcome the region limitation, we also allow these select applications to customize Flight Tracker's quorum config. For example, to cater toward the high read-write ratio, they could write to Flight Tracker in all regions and read from Flight Tracker in the local region. Additionally, systems at the product infrastructure layer may handle tickets explicitly, especially when we can piggyback on existing communication paths. For example, Facebook has a PubSub notification system that allows a user web request or some internal infrastructure to trigger a publish event to subscribers in many different regions. Each subscriber reads from Tau in order to render personalized notifications for our users. The problem is, however, the publish events race with Tau's replication, which means the subscriber may not observe the publisher's earlier writes that the notification depends on. To solve this, we let the publisher collect its writes into a ticket and send this ticket along the publish event. All subscribers then use ticket-inclusive reads to render the notifications, thus explicitly guaranteeing read the publisher's rights. We learned quite a few fascinating, even surprising lessons from designing, implementing, and running Flight Tracker in production. One of the interesting lessons we've learned is that the fact that ticket-inclusive reads provides per item at or after or lower bound semantics combined with the encapsulation of tickets, gave us great flexibility in our system design. Whenever we do a ticket-inclusive read, we can safely include additional write metadata. The read will still yield an acceptable read result because we're simply raising this lower bound. Since applications can't inspect what's inside a ticket, they can't really tell the difference from just the read result. This means that FlyTracker server and client libraries can freely join tickets whenever new writes happen. We leverage this property to compact tickets. For example, we assume async replication finishes everywhere within 60 seconds, so FlyTracker can replace write metadata older than 60 seconds with a single global timestamp, 
which semantically expresses all prior writes from 60 seconds ago. We also leverage this property to have a single round quorum-based protocol for flight tracker, as we only need to provide durability, but not atomicity. For more details, please see the flight tracker paper. One of the other early lessons we learned was that identifying logged in user ID was actually much more difficult than we expected. Some accounts are associated with multiple identity. For example, a user may manage a business account and request endpoints could be invoked before login or after logout. Constraints on our system design and implementation are not based on the average case, but the extreme ones, such as hotspots, which largely come from batched internal jobs and not necessarily user actions, or disaster scenarios. Our ability for applications to opt into alternative write visibility guarantees late in the product development cycle without data schema changes or migrations really enabled us to make read your writes a good default. One of the side benefits of our decompositional framework is that ticket inclusive reads established a contract that revealed latent bugs in our existing eventual consistency protocols. With eventual asynchronous replication, we can easily distinguish between replication lag versus a bug, but ticket inclusive reads have wrong answers, each of which becomes actionable. On the operational side, the applications that cause the most trouble often need read your writes the least. These tend to be internal applications for batch processing or with massive fanouts. The decomposition in our design also allowed us to incrementally provide read your writes for multiple types of data stores, including two caches, three global indexes, and two database technologies. Flight Tracker has six nines of read availability and an order of magnitude higher write availability compared with the underlying data stores. In aggregate, Flight Tracker incurs less than 2% overhead in CPU, RAM, and latency in our social graph serving stack. Flight Tracker has been in production for four years, serving 20 million writes and 100 million reads per second, providing read your writes consistency for one quadrillion data store queries per day. Thank you for listening. For more details, please see our paper on Flight Tracker.